Hi everyone and welcome to this session all about boosting ITSM practices with asset and configuration management. As you probably already know, missing data is incredibly expensive. There are countless industry reports from Gartner, Forrester and the like talking about how missing data costs companies huge amounts in time and money when it comes to their IT service management practices. Whether you're doing full ITIL 4 prescribed ITSM or your own lightweight version of ITSM, you need access to key information to make decisions when planning your services, helping your employees with technical support, resolving incidents, and so much more. Whenever you need information, you go away and find it, but it's not always so easy. There's a huge difference in efficiency between searching through three different tools and spreadsheets over and over again when requests come in and having the required information already attached to the request. If you can do the latter, you can save precious time, improve customer satisfaction, approve changes faster with minimized risk, and more. How does that sound? In this session, we'll explore asset and configuration management, which can help solve this information shortage for ITSM. We'll do so in the context of Jira Service Management, Atlassian's ITSM solution. We'll start with a brief introduction before diving into Jira Service Management and Insight, the JSM feature for asset and configuration management. Mindville's Insight was acquired by Atlassian last year, and we've recently integrated it into JSM. So I'm excited to show off this new capability to you today. I'll end with some real world examples from organizations that have been using Insight to boost their practices. So let's begin with some background. There are many questions that you may find come up day to day that can sometimes be difficult to answer. When you consider your hardware and your software, you have questions like, are you using too many software licenses? Are you renewing your contracts on time? An employee has submitted a broken hardware request, but which hardware do they have? And when you consider your infrastructure and your business services, you have questions like, if you make this change, what services might be affected? What devices and applications are running your services? Which of your services are having the most downtime and why? If you can answer these types of questions, you can utilize your assets and manage your services far more effectively. Asset and configuration management can help answer these questions and many more. Both practices provide much needed context on your IT equipment, infrastructure and services. They are different yet related strategies. Asset management focuses more on the whole life cycle of the asset, from procurement to deployment to maintenance and then to retirement. It's used to check that the assets a company bought are being used efficiently and correctly and aren't costing more than they should. This information has traditionally been stored in an asset repository. Configuration management, on the other hand, only really cares about how various items are configured. It looks at how something is doing what it's doing, what settings it has, and how it relates to other items or configuration items. This information is usually stored in a configuration management database or a CMDB. A question that usually comes up at this point is what's the difference between an asset and a configuration item or a CI? A broad definition is that assets have a cost associated with them, and therefore you want to ensure a good return on investment. And a CI can be configured in a way that you're interested in documenting. There's a big overlap between assets and CIs. A server is both an asset and a CI, for example, but not all CIs are assets and not all assets are CIs, and definitions can vary company to company. Our ethos at Atlassian is to keep things simple. So in our world, we use objects to describe our assets and configuration items. An object is a physical or virtual thing or resource you want to track and store some information about, be it to track its cost or to understand how it's configured or both. Objects could be virtual machines, servers, software, laptops, employees, vendors, vehicles, anything you like. We track our objects in Insight the new feature for JSM that brings asset and configuration capabilities into the JIRA environment. So you can store the relevant object data you need to answer the questions we saw earlier. Insight is made up of a number of parts. I'll take you through the four key components now. The first is the database, 
You can call it a CMDB if you like, or an asset repository, but it's a database of whatever you and your organization need to track. These objects can then be linked to Jira issues. The Inside database is incredibly flexible. So if you want to create a small database of objects that just gives you a high level overview of your services, you can. If you want to document everything about your on-prem infrastructure in a more traditional CMDB way, you can do that too. And if you just want to store some basic information about some assets your business owns, then you can do that also. There's no limit to what objects you can store. Today, we're focusing on IT, but you can store facilities objects, information on the security clearances of your staff, customer details, and more. Next up are tools to get data into Insight in the first place. There's a number of different options here. Firstly, we have Insight Discovery, an agentless network scanner that can find IP-enabled devices on your network and bring them into Insight along with various details about them, such as IP address, installed software, licenses, etc. Secondly, you have the ability to import files into Insight, including CSV, JSON, LDAP, and databases. And finally, we have integrations with third-party tools, such as cloud service providers, mobile device management systems, and other CMDB tools. Another major aspect of Insight is the automations based on the objects themselves. These can be used for updating the status of your services if an incident occurs and notifying the owner of that service, auto-routing Jira issues based on the linked Insight object, updating the asset status of your equipment, and more. The aim is to use these rules to take off as much administration burden as possible from staff while keeping the Insight database up to date at the same time. The final key area of Insight is the ability to query the data. You can query and report on the data within the Insight database itself. For example, see in stock lists or how many seats of a license you have left. But you can also search Jira issues based on what Insight objects were attached to them. So you can see which CIs are involved in the most incidents or which workplace technology is creating the highest number of requests and then take corrective actions. But that's enough of me chatting about what Insight is. It's much easier for me to show you how it works. We'll go through three of the most common use cases of Insight to show how it can speed up various ITSM practices. And we will start with asset management. As you likely already know, a common asset management task is keeping on top of all your asset statuses and making sure you renew contracts and retire equipment when required. Let's take a look at how this works in JSM and Insight. Here we are in Jira Service Management, and you access Insight by going to the top and selecting Insight and View All Object Schemas. That will bring you to the Insight database. Insight stores objects in object schemas, and we have several here. This one stores some of our infrastructure details relevant to the company's website. This one stores employee information, and this one here stores the results of our Insight Discovery scans. The Services schema at the bottom is synchronized with Jira Service Management Service Registry, so we can link our infrastructure to the services that they support. But let's focus on this IT Employee Asset Schema, which is acting as more of a traditional asset repository. I'll go ahead and open it up. Down the left, we can see the different types of objects we're storing. So we have things like laptops and monitors and phones, and some other relevant information about the models our company supports, the locations and the vendors. Let's take a look at a laptop. We have its name, asset status, model, owner, cost, and much more. The model, location, and owner are each their own objects that we have linked to this laptop to give us more information about the laptop. For example, having the laptop model as a separate object that we link to means we don't have to enter CPU, screen size, vendor, etc. for every single laptop that we have. We just make the link. So this is a brief introduction into the Insight database and how you store objects. Now let's look at how Insight and Jira Service Management can help you retire objects when needed as one example of an asset management process that Insight can help with. Here we can see that each laptop has a warranty expiration date. Let's switch over to our Jira service management automations and see what we can do. Firstly, we have this rule here, 
to make a new task that alerts IT staff that they need to take action soon. This rule runs every month and finds all laptops with a warranty that's going to expire within the next 45 days. It then creates an issue to notify staff that certain laptops need to be dealt with. So if we run this now and then look at our queue, I can see this new task. And if I open it up, we can see that two laptops are up for renewal. Currently, we just have it listing the laptops in question. We could, if we wanted to, attach the actual insight objects to this issue. The other automation rule we have alerts the owners of the laptop. This rule runs every week and finds all upcoming expiring laptops. It looks for the owner of the laptop as set in insight, finds their email, and then sends them an automated email with instructions on how to request a new laptop. If I run this and then switch to the employee's email account, we can see this email arrive. This just scratches the surface of what's possible to help your asset management procedures. The same principles that I've shown here can be applied to renewing software licenses to take advantage of early renewal discounts, alert staff when stock levels get too low or the number of available software seats gets too low, and much more. We'll see some more examples of automation rules to help with asset management in the next demo. Next, let's take a look at how the asset inventory we just saw can speed up service requests. In this demo, we'll see a common service request and how insight objects can be brought into the issue to provide more context. Let's go to the portal and pretend I'm a developer with a broken laptop. I'll select to request a new laptop and then enter the required information. I'll select that I damaged my current laptop and add a description. Now I can select which hardware I want to request. This drop down is linked to our laptop model objects we saw earlier. I'll also pick some accessories I want to have with the laptop as well and submit the request. Now let's switch over to the agents view and take a look at what the agent sees when this request comes in. Here we have even more information thanks to Insight. Firstly, in the center of the issue, we can see the description and the requested laptop and accessories. But down the right, we can also see another attached laptop. Insight related automation rules have been run in the background to look at the requester and find the laptop that they are currently the owner of and then bring it into this request. So now I instantly know what laptop has been broken. I don't need to go back and forth with the employee asking for their current laptop serial number or if they want a 13 or 16 inch laptop. It's all here in the request. There are also two other automations that have taken place. Firstly, the status of Dante's current laptop has been set to damaged. This is because I selected current laptop is damaged from the drop down in the request form. Automation rules can be used in this way to keep the inside data up to date and reduce the admin burden on agents. The other automation rule has looked up the requester, Dante, in the employee's object schema. There, it has found Dante's manager and automatically assigned the issue and the approver to Daryl, Dante's manager. Now, laptop requests only reach IT when they've already been approved. Now, let's assume that this request has been approved and I, as a member of the support team now, need to check whether we have a laptop in stock. I can see here that Dante is located in Amsterdam and has requested a 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. If I go into Insight and then into my Asset Schema again, I can see all of my laptops. But if I click this view, I get to see my laptops as a list and then I can filter this list. So I'll filter by model. And then by status is in stock. And I can see I have two of the requested laptops in stock, one of which is in Amsterdam. Now as the agent, I can quickly fulfill this request and arrange the new laptop to be collected by Dante, all without leaving Jira service management. In our final demo, let's take a look at what happens when there's a change, incident, or problem with our services or infrastructure. We'll focus on an incident example, but the same principle applies to changes and problems too. In this demo, one of our service desk agents has noticed a few customer issues coming in. 
They're saying that they can no longer access certain pricing pages on the company's website, so the agent decides to raise an incident. I'll click to report a system problem and I'll give the incident a name. And a description. And then I will select the affected service, which is linked to our Jira Service Management Service Registry. In this case, I'll choose the website service. I also have the option to include any affected business applications, which I'm pulling from Insight. Here, I will choose the inventory and pricing application and the customer application, which both support the website. This could be set up to automatically pull in the related applications based on which service is affected. But in this example, I'm not using these automations. I'll fill in a few more details and then submit the incident. In the issue view, I once again get a lot more context thanks to Insight. We can see here the attached service and then the two applications below it. Currently, the applications are showing their statuses as up. But if I choose to investigate this incident, automation rules update the status to show incident in progress. Now, everyone across the Jira environment can see that something is happening with these business applications and that somebody is actively looking into it. I can also access the relationship view from the incident. Here, I get a bit more information on the underlying dependencies of my website. And if I double click on this host, I get even more information about that particular host. And in this way, I can dig down and find potential causes of my incidents. You can also see linked Jira issues from this view. So if I click my inventory and pricing application here and click on this tab, I can see the linked issues. So we can see the open incident I just created, but we can also see a change request to install a patch. Now I could investigate this further and see if that change may be the cause of this incident. A similar process to what I've just shown can be done for changes and problems. Relevant objects can be attached to the issues and then the graph can be used to quickly assess the downstream impact of changes or help find the root causes of problems. That's it for our demonstrations. I hope you found them informative and can see how asset and configuration management really can boost your ITSM practices. So let's see how this plays out in the real world with a few quick examples. We'll start with asset management. This story comes from the UCLA library team who had an absolute nightmare tracking the laptops that they lent to students. They decided to use Insight for this. So now a student can request a laptop, one that is available is assigned to the student, and this is automatically updated in the Insight database. So the staff can easily track who has what. The additional major benefit here is that the UCLA tech support team also use Jira, which means if there's a problem with a laptop or a library workstation, the tech support team have a lot of information about the hardware in question and can help much faster. It's also easier for the library team to communicate with the tech support team as now they're all on the same platform. Next, we head over to Klarna, one of Europe's largest fintech companies. They provide payment solutions to upwards of 60 million customers. Klarna are using Jira software, Jira service management, Bitbucket and more across the company, but they realized that they had a gap. They wanted more context for Jira issues, context that was added automatically. They started using Insight to provide this context. By storing their assets, internal applications and more, they are able to pull in context to various issues and resolve them faster. For example, when an incident happens, it is reported through JSM. The system is attached to the incident via an Insight field, so firstly, this gives more context to the incident itself. But if the dev team might be needed based on which system is affected, it also triggers some automations to create a Jira software issue and automatically add relevant stakeholders as viewers. Now, everyone that needs to understand the incident from both a dev and ops perspective has access to the same information and can work together far more effectively. I'm sure you can imagine the kind of impact that this has had on their organization. And to wrap up, I'll leave you with one more story. I think you will find this one a little unusual as it features pianos of all things. 
John Hopkins University originally used JSM and Insight for the types of ITSM uses we've seen today. But as they became familiar with the flexibility of Insight, they realized that they could apply it to anything that required tracking and linking to JIRA issues. Now, they have millions of dollars worth of pianos that are tracked via JSM and Insight. Maintenance requests come in, and the team can easily see important details based on the type of piano in the JIRA request to make sure they're servicing their pianos in the correct way. Now, pianos certainly aren't a common use of the Insight database, but we often see users branching out of ITSM into other areas such as facilities, HR, and legal. So that's it for this presentation. I hope you've got a good understanding of how asset and configuration management can help you respond faster to service requests, minimize risk by helping assess changes, troubleshoot incidents and problems quicker, and track assets to help with planning, audits, and compliance. The bottom line is it helps you implement high velocity ITSM. So how can you use Insight? If you already have JSM Data Center or JSM Cloud Premium or Enterprise, you can access Insight today. Otherwise, start a free trial of JSM to see how Insight can help you and your organization boost your ITSM practices and avoid a data black hole. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please submit them to the community thread and I'd be happy to answer them.